Hey everybody, John from Wire here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a monitor for your website to check every couple of minutes to make sure your site is still online. This works for WordPress websites, Shopify stores, and your own custom site if you had it set up that way. What we're also going to do is set up an alert so that you're notified if your website has a problem. The tool we're going to use to accomplish both of these tasks is called New Relic. New Relic is an application monitoring software that provides a bunch of different features and tools. We're only going to use a few of the tools that New Relic provides in this video. New Relic is completely free, up to a certain number of website checks per month, and data that you use is completely free as well, up to 100 gigabytes. For this tutorial and the tools we're going to use today, you won't have to pay anything because we'll be on the free tier. To get started, navigate to newrelic.com and click on the sign up button. Enter your account name and your email. I'm going to use my Gmail account. You'll receive an email that you need to go and click on with a confirmation link. I'm going to go and copy that link and then come back here to create a password. This final option asks you where you'd like to store your data. It doesn't make a difference what option you select. The data center that New Relic uses does not have to match your physical location. I'd recommend just using the United States data region for this purpose. Once your account is set up, you'll be taken directly to a landing page where it will ask you to configure your installation but we're actually gonna skip this step by clicking on the See Other Options link at the bottom of this page. We're now in the New Relic application page, our account has been set up, and in the next section of the video, we'll set up our monitor to check our website for downtime. When you first log into New Relic, you're going to have a lot of different tools. We're only going to use two of these tools, Synthetic Monitoring and the Alerts and AI section. So to start, let's click on Synthetic Monitoring then it's going to ask you to create your first monitor. So within this section, there is a lot of different monitor types that you can select. Let's go with availability. We can always come back and create a page load performance option a little bit later. So if we click on availability, what this is going to do is it's going to ask you to name the monitor and then provide the URL and the time frame as when New Relic is going to check to see if your site is online. So I'm going to name this my website and then I'm going to select the URL that I want to check. And then finally, I'm going to select the period. So I want every 30 minutes for New Relic to check this website on whether or not it is online. There's a few advanced options that you can choose. So if you wanted to do a text validation, you can select the text on your website that you want New Relic to check for. Let's show an example of what this means. So if I go to my website, and if I see on my website a piece of text, um, maybe we should have a piece of text at the bottom of the website to make sure that the website is loading everything correctly. All right, so I'm at the bottom here. And um, what if I have this last article? So this is what's going to happen if you select this. I'm going to select this text. I'm going to paste it within the text validation section. All right, and what this is going to do is that New Relic is going to load my website every 30 minutes, and it's going to check to make sure that this text is on the site when it goes and checks it. So why is this important, you might be asking? Well, there is the possibility that your website loads, but maybe it crashes halfway through, and the other half of your website doesn't load after maybe this point in the site. This is not good, and you'll never know this unless you manually go and check yourself. So by putting a text validation in this field here with an article text or a title that's at the bottom of your site, you're just making sure that your entire website from top to bottom is loading every single time that New Relic checks for it. So this is important, but it's totally optional if you don't want to add it as well. All right, so I have all the default settings that I want. I don't need to verify any of these different options here. So now I'm going to go to the select locations option. So what we want to do is we want to select the locations that New Relic is going to try to attempt to access the website from. So if you are blocked in certain locations or if you're in a region where you're not going to have someone from, say, Australia be able to access your website anyway, it's probably best to leave out Australia or that area that is restricted. I'm just going to choose one or two of them. Um, I think it yeah, recommends three locations total. So I'm going to choose Columbus, Ohio, London, England, Sydney, and then Tokyo, just for good measure. And now I'm going to save my monitor. 
Okay, so my monitor has been saved, and over the next couple of minutes, the four locations that I've chosen are all going to attempt to access my website and look for that piece of text that I told it to look for. So I'm going to come back in a couple minutes, and we're going to see the results of this test. Okay, so I've waited a couple minutes, and it looks like the rest of the locations are still pending for that request to go out, but my Tokyo location successfully went to my website and checked to make sure the main piece of text was there. So you can see that I have zero failures and one checks that have been completed. So what I can do with this information is I can go to the results section on the left-hand side, and I can see that my Tokyo attempt happened on this date at this timestamp, and the result was a success. So this is good. This means that my website is up. It means that everything loaded correctly. It means that it was able to find that piece of text at the bottom, which was related to this article, and everything worked out well. So everything looks good here. I want to show you what happens when something doesn't go well and when an error occurs, because this will influence how we create our alerts within the alerts section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this alert, or excuse me, this monitor by going into the general section under settings. And I'm going to do something under the advanced options to make sure that this monitor fails. And what I'm going to do is for the text validation section, I'm just going to misspell something. So I'm going to change recently to the misspelling of recently. And what this is going to do is it's going to check for guide how to view recently played songs on iOS. And it's not going to be able to find it because recently is not spelled correctly. Now, I'm using this as an example, but in a normal situation, you would want to put the correct piece of text here, and you would only have an error when your website can't load. So if your website is down, or if it's overloaded, or something else happens where it couldn't load everything on the site. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to make sure that this monitor fails, and then I'm going to show you what happens once it fails. So I'm going to click on Save Monitor. And then in a couple minutes, it's going to have a check in London, England, or maybe in Sydney, Australia, and this check is going to fail. So I'm going to fast forward a couple minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when a check fails. Okay, so instead of waiting for London, England to go and perform its check, I just clicked on the run check button next to my Tokyo, Japan, and that was able to detect the failure instantly. So this is exciting. Let's look and see what happens when a failure occurs on your website. So if I go into the results tab, I can see that a recent check failed and I can see the failure message right here as to why it failed. So the response did not contain the expected string. And obviously it will never contain that expected string because recently is spelled wrong. So if I click into this, I can see exactly the timeline of what was loaded on the site and I can also see the full error that occurred with this check itself. So what I can do with this information is I can go into the failures tab and I can see all of the different failures and the locations of what happened. So now what we're going to do is now that we know that we have an error that's occurring and we know that the error is occurring because we made it happen, we can go and set up an alert. That way, if this alert happens in the future or if this error happens in the future, we can be alerted that it occurred and we can also go and fix the issue right from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an alert condition. So on the left hand side under detect, we're going to create a new policy under the alert conditions. And we're going to name this policy website is down. And we're going to do one issue per policy. And then click on set up notifications. So within this section, it's going to ask you, how would you like to be alerted? Um, you can have a mobile push to your cell phone. If you have a Slack instance or a service now, you can add this as a channel as well. Uh, there's a bunch of different options here. I'm going to choose this as email. So I have my wire website at gmail.com. I'm going to use this as my notification channel uh, if something goes wrong on my site. So I'm going to click on activate workflow. And I notice that the workflow has been activated, but we're not done yet. Um, we've created our policy of who to alert if something happens, but we have to tell the policy when to alert based on a specific condition. So what we need to do is we need to go and create a condition associated with our policy. So I'm going to click on create a condition. 
and we were using a synthetic monitoring. So we're going to click on synthetics and then we're going to choose the type of condition to show an alert. So we can choose via a single failure. So if one of the locations that we're using fails once, then we can send an alert. Or if all of the locations are failing, we can have an alert sent that way. I'd recommend doing the multiple location failures because every once in a while, a location will fail just randomly or because of other reasons outside of your control. If you have multiple locations failing at the same time, that usually means that your website has an issue. So I'm gonna choose multiple location failures and then I'm gonna click on next, select entities. So I have my website, which is the synthetic monitoring alert that we created earlier. And then I'm going to define the thresholds. So a threshold is just the parameters that you want to choose for this alert to fire. So if I wanna say that all of my locations are failing, I know that I have four locations based on what I selected earlier. So I'm gonna choose four locations are failing. The violation time limit is a little bit difficult to understand, but it's simply the amount of time that you want New Relic to wait until your alert is automatically closed. So imagine this, if you set up a violation time limit to 12 hours, if that violation lasts for 12 hours, the violation will be closed at that 12 hour mark. I usually set my alerts for two to three days as a violation window, but just for the purpose of this tutorial and for future tutorials that I'm gonna make, I'm gonna change it to 30 minutes. Again, if you're not sure about this option, change it to two to three days. I'll link to the documentation below at the video description if you wanna learn more about this option. So I'm gonna name this condition website all locations failing. And I'm gonna put my 30 mins as the violation time limit just so I remind myself uh, that this is set in a 30 minute time frame. All right, and then I'm gonna click on create condition. Okay, so my alert is on and it's now going to check to see if all of my locations have failed. I know that they're failing in the background because I changed the alert condition to do so. So I'm gonna leave this on and I'm going to wait and see until all of my locations have failed. I can do this in a couple ways. I can view the issues that are generated by this alert. And because we haven't waited 30 minutes, nothing is going to appear here. Or I can go into my synthetic monitoring tab and I can see all the different layers that are happening based on the errors tab on the left-hand side, right here, failures tab. Or I can just wait for this email to arrive. So I'm gonna wait 30 minutes, come back, and I'll show you what happens once the alert goes off. Okay, so I've waited a couple of minutes and I even went back into my synthetic monitor and I changed it from 30 minutes to five minutes just so it would fail quicker. And what happened after a couple of minutes is that all four locations failed. So all four of my different locations within my monitor failed on my website. So in the alerts and AI section, if I'm in the issues and activity, I can see that there is an active alert and it's pretty critical. It means all of my issues have failed within this time frame that I specified. So what I'm gonna show you is what it looks like within the alerts and AI section. And then we're going to look at the synthetics monitoring tab to see what information is there. And finally, I'm going to show you what the email looks like that you're going to receive once your website is down. So first let's click on, on the issues and activity section and then click on the active issue that's going on. So this tab is going to show you all of the details related to this alert that just occurred. So we can see that all four of these locations for the My Web website, Synthetics Shark, have failed. And I can really quickly view the results of why they failed for each location by clicking on these buttons. If I scroll down, I can also see all of the impacted entities. So if you have multiple websites that are going down, it'll show a nice little correlation here about where each ones are affected. And at the issue timeline, I can see exactly when the issue occurred and what happened in terms of who was notified and when the issue was activated. And then finally, there's additional metadata at the bottom if you wanted to copy and paste this issue and send it to one of your engineers. So this is really critical. Um, so what I can do is I can do a few things. Uh, I can first go and I can acknowledge the issue so I can make sure that I have said, yep, I know this is happening. I've acknowledged it. I'm now going to work on it, fixing it. So I would go to my website and see, you know, why is it not loading or why can't it find that specific string? And then once I've gone and fixed the issue, uh, I would go and click on close issue. Before I do that, 
I want to show you what it looks like within the synthetic monitors tab. And I also want to show you what it looks like via the email that you're going to receive. So I know an email has been sent because it has the notified option right here. And it says that an email has been sent to my email address that I have on file. So now let's check out the synthetics monitor tab. And within this tab, you can see that my little icon here went from green to red. And that only happens because there's a critical violation that's happening that I specified within my alert section. And I can see really quickly that all my locations are failing. Uh, and that is obviously a bad time. I can see within the failure section, all of my different locations and the message that they're receiving. So obviously something has gone wrong. So now let's just take a look at what it will look like when you receive an email, and then let's go and fix this alert so it doesn't happen again. Okay, so I've just logged in to my email, and I can see that I have a New Relic incident email that's just occurred. And what happens is that it'll show you what's been activated. So four more of my locations have failed for the My Website check. And it'll also give me a brief overview of what happened uh, with some helpful links at the top to acknowledge or close the issue or go to the issue. So I'm going to click on go to issue and it's going to bring up the alert that I have uh, that I've just seen within my alerts and AI section. So let's go into our synthetic monitoring and let's fix this alert condition. Because again, this isn't actually an issue with my website. It is an issue with my alert. So if I click on general under settings and then I change my validation back to recently, then click on save monitor. This is the correct text, which is on my site. So now that I've created that fix, I'm going to rerun my check for Tokyo, Japan. And once this is run correctly, I can go into my results section and I can see that my recent result for Tokyo, Japan was a success. So I was able to load my site and find my response validation. So what I can do now is that I know that this issue has been resolved, so I can go to the alerts and AI section. So I'm back within the alerts and AI section, and you'll notice that there's none of my alerts are located here. And that's because I've acknowledged each one of them. So if I change the state to acknowledged, it'll show me this current issue that is happening right here. So I can click on it and I can close the issue, which means that I fixed it and it won't show up on my dashboard anymore. I can also add a postmortem so I can write up an overview of what happened just in case anybody comes along and wants to resolve this in the future. Um, you can add a postmortem, which allows you to basically uh, add additional details about what you did in order to issue a fix. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to click on close issue. Okay, so you are done. So just to recap, what we've done is we've created a monitor, which will check our website every couple of minutes from a different location. And it's going to check for a specific string on your site to make sure that it loads correctly. If it doesn't load correctly, then what we have is we've set up a alert condition with a policy to notify us via email, which will notify us if four of the locations are not returning the result that we want. And in doing so, it's going to have an alert that will show up in the overview section. It's going to have an email that will be sent to your email address that's on file, or whatever you've configured with your alert. And you'll also be given a notification within the synthetics monitoring tab, which will tell you that the location has been failing. So all of these tools are really helpful to keep on track and keep an eye on your different websites, even if you're not there checking every single day. It's a really easy way to make sure your website is up and running. And it's super simple to modify these if you want to have additional alerts or different types of notifications to a Slack channel or to a different person like one of your developers. So I hope this helped. If you found this useful, please let me know within the comment section below. I'm really looking forward to making more of these types of videos if they are interesting to you. So your feedback would be really welcome. I hope this helped again. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Thanks and have a good day.